हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस आस कमंग सीरीज सो इन दिस ऑल ऑफ यू कैन पुट फोर्थ ऑल योर क्वेश्चंस but there is one main question of the day and today's question is what is gaudiya vaishnavism so we have been discussing the philosophy and many devotees were inquisitive that prabhu this come this term often comes in our discussions vaishnavism especially gaudiya vaishnavism so what do we mean by it so the word gaudi has come from gaudadesh which means today's west bengal and the bangladesh region and vaishnavism means the devotees of lord krishna lord vishnu so devotees of lord krishna who hail from bengal the followers of lord chaitanya who is incarnation uh incarnation would not be the right word who is krishna himself the source of all incarnations lord krishna descended in this age of kali as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu 500 years ago in navadweep in west bengal so his followers are known as gaudiya vaishnavas so it's not a new movement started 500 years ago founded by lord chaitanya and today it is very widely known across the world as the hari krishna movement so what is the unique feature of this gaudiya vaishnavism vaishnavism was there so what was the need of lord chaitanya to come here and explain this philosophy so there have been so many isms in the world there is communism as we can see there is socialism so many isms we have created but these isms do not give satisfaction to the self that is always missing in life thus the great vaishnava acharyas came and they established the philosophy no ism but vaishnavism which is absolute truth is going to satisfy the soul lord krishna or lord vishnu is the supreme personality of godhead and we are his part and parcels as the leaf is part and parcel of tree so rather than trying to satisfy one's own senses one should try to give pleasure to the senses of krishna in this way we will be automatically satisfied now this is a revolutionary philosophy so when the man in the west was directing his explorative spirit towards discovering the physical universe exploring the new oceans and continents chaitanya mahaprabhu in the east was inaugurating and masterminding a movement which was directed towards self discovery towards presenting the highest knowledge of the nature of self so the west has been completely unaware of this revolutionary concept it is not that you accumulate the objects of senses and try to enjoy yourself that you get satisfaction in but by using all these resources in the service of god that we actually feel that satisfaction for which we always have been hankering but even though great acharyas had come shri pad madhva acharya ramanuj acharya vishnu swami nimbarka acharya but 500 years ago the situation was very serious the dharma is established and then again that is the nature of this world in course of time the teachings they are forgotten lord krishna himself came but then again adharma again prevailed that is the nature nothing stays in this material world things come and things go so even the vaishnava acharyas came and presented this philosophy but 500 years ago things were again very very mundane even though people were following the vedas at least in words they were trying to follow the 
regulations, rituals, but they forgot the ultimate end of all these rituals. And people started thinking, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha is the aim of life. Now today people do not even know that. They think Kam. Kam means sense gratification is the aim of life. But we cannot enjoy our senses unless we follow the laws of nature. A thief also wants to enjoy. But such enjoyment brings more distress to the thief. But there is a genuine way by working in the interest of the government. We can direct our activities and thus enjoy the material comforts. So it is very important to know what is the interest of the government, what is the interest of God. So any new machine which we see around us, this camera we are recording this session in, if you find any camera, you may wonder, oh, what is this device? From where it has come? What is the purpose? If you do not know about it, we will inquire. What do we use it for? And we see this amazing human body, the amazing species all around us working in such a perfect, balanced ecosystem. But we do not inquire what is the purpose. So unless the machines are used for the purpose for which they are designed, there would be frustration. Machine would be destroyed, user would be frustrated. So what is the purpose of this creation? People think in this machine, this machine is attracted to the objects of the senses. Let us enjoy and that is the purpose. No, that is not the purpose. A child may enter into college and in college there are so many facilities. Good colleges have very nice sports facilities which could be given to a national athlete but later which could be given to a national athlete but the purpose of college is not exactly to develop sportsmen but all these facilities are there so that a child, a student can study very nicely. If the child thinks, oh, all these facilities are there so that I can entire day keep on playing sports, keep on doing swimming, and extra curricks are taken as the objective of entering into college, then the whole purpose of the institution is defeated. Extra curricks are required so that the person can focus on the curriculum. So some pleasure is there in the sensual activities so that person can be directed towards the ultimate aim of life and that is satisfaction of God. When this philosophy is not known, then the entire purpose of this institution set up by God is defeated. So, this disturbance is there, we can do some arrangement for that. So the purpose of this institution is defeated if you do not know the aim. So people were reading the Vedas and people were thinking, oh, let us follow these rules and regulations, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, and that is the aim of life. Then Advaita Charya, who is incarnation of Mahavishnu, he was lamenting that people are not reaching the ultimate stage of life. If we are doing all these things very nicely, but then the last thing, objective, is not achieved, then entire purpose is defeated. So dharma is required. Dharma means understanding the rules and regulations. If we follow the rules and regulations very nicely, we can do economic development. Economic development without following dharma, that is crime. That is what we are doing now. Nobody knows what is dharma. There are many, many dharma shastras over 20 number, like Manu Samhita, Parashar Samhita. Just like the laws are very elaborate here. If there is any legal suit, we need the help of lawyers. Very difficult to understand. Similarly, we need the help of brahmanas to understand the laws and then act very strictly according to the laws. Now, there is no education about dharma. There is education about technology. We think by inventing some technology, we'll be happy. If a thief thinks, I can invent nice machines for robbing the bank, will the government let the thief rob the bank? No. If you try to smart out the government, government will punish us even more. That is why we do not analyze. Unfortunately, there is no time to sit and analyze. We are working very hard in this competitive world. 
But if it's down and analyzed, we have worked so hard, but on which platform our happiness is increased? There is scientific advancement, more research papers are being published, more universities, more investment governments are doing all across the world. But despite so much growth in technology and science, what is the result? There is distress at physical level, more diseases, very, very unhealthy lifestyle has become. All these diseases, cancer has become very common thing which was not known. Air, water, earth, everything has been polluted. At mental level, now distress is coming. Children, it was a philosophy that children cannot come under depression. But now this philosophy has been defied. Children are in depression. Mental disorders, diseases are increasing in the society. It is said that every fifth person in India is depressed. And so is the situation in the rest of the world also. So at mental level, there is no happiness. Physical level, there is no happiness. More diseases, more problems. Family happiness, there are hardly any families. So at which level has happiness increased in our life? This is because dharma is not there, it is not present. Without knowing the laws, if we want to enjoy, we want to do economic development, that is crime. Thief wants to do economic development without knowing the laws or by violating the laws. Because we do not know, we keep on violating them blatantly. That is why among the four aims of life, the Vedas tell this dharma is very important, which is the first aim. If a person is very, very dharmic, avowedly religious, following the rules and regulations, what is religion? People hate religion. It is uh, the blame is to be given to the people who represent religion as some fanaticism because philosophy is missing. But religion means dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam, the rules and regulations given by the God so that man can elevate, a person can elevate to the spiritual platform. Beyond the conception of Indian, American, man, woman, animal, understanding I am pure spirit soul. If we follow these rules and regulations nicely, which are called religion, we will be able to understand I am eternal. So you follow dharma very nicely and then artha will happen automatically. If a person is very religious, economic development will happen. And by economic development, a person can try to satisfy one's senses. That is called calm, third level. Now people are jumping directly to economic development and sense gratification. Dharma is forgotten. The result is endless miseries. Miseries are just increasing in the life. And after calm, sense gratification, a person would be dissatisfied. Now, because he has followed dharma, dharma is given in the shastras, that person has got faith. All the while, he has been neglecting one portion of the shastras, which is called Gyan Kanda, which talks about liberation, which tells us we will not be satisfied by enjoyment of the senses. And then a person goes towards the fourth aim of life, which is called moksha, which means liberation from this repeated birth and death. So if a person has followed the system very nicely, the living entity can try to gratify the senses in this material world and ultimately understand senses, even though I can supply them sense objects, they will not be satisfied. Then easily a person aspires for and attains liberation. But the education, spiritual education, the objective of life is not met here. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told. Advaita Chari lamented. People are simply lost in dharma, earth, calm and moksha. But people do not know beyond moksha there is something else. And that only if Lord Krishna himself descends, he can explain it to society. And that is prema pumartho mahan, that is love of God. Moksha means freedom from this material world. We do not belong to this place. It is incompatible situation like a fish in water. This is a confidential information which is not known. We think this material universe is all in all and that is what the people in the West were doing. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started this movement which was a revolution which told people need not bother about the external world. Start your journey inwards. Understand the science of this spirit which we actually are. And this spirit cannot be happy in this world which is made up of matter. But spirit can only be satisfied in spiritual world. So there is a spiritual world and living entities originally belong to that place. 
Moksha means simply freedom from this material world. The fish is out of land, but it needs to be put in water. So we need to get back to the spiritual world and we need to have love of God. Only when we get love of God, then we can actually get satisfaction in life. So even though the Vaishnava Acharyas have given the philosophy that we need to go back to the spiritual world, back to Godhead, but there is something which is even beyond going back to Godhead. So it is told, if all the happiness of this material world put together is compared to the happiness of moksha, Brahmananda or liberation, it becomes just like a drop of water compared to an ocean. The happiness of liberation is an ocean of bliss. It is just like after great torture, person gets freedom from jail. We do not have that experience. At least we have experience of when we get Fridays, when we get vacations or when the exams are over, we get a lot of happiness because we are out of that trouble. So suffering for millions and millions of births, repeated birth, death, old age and disease, when the living entity gets freedom from this harassment, there is great happiness. That happiness is compared to ocean. But when that happiness of Brahmananda is compared to happiness of love of God, that becomes again like a drop of water and love of God it is like an ocean which is ever increasing. So in this way, the happiness of material world, sense enjoyment, Brahmananda and love of Godhead are compared. So those people who have just the basic knowledge of the Vedas, they aspire for moksha. And that mukti is called Sayuji mukti. Mukti does not just mean liberation from birth and death or merging in the Brahma Jyoti. That is called Sayuji mukti, impersonal liberation. Higher than Sayuji mukti are Samipya Salop, Salokya, Sarshti and Sarupya. Samipi means having close association of God in the spiritual world. Sarupi means having the same form as that of God. We want to become very beautiful, attractive here. We go to gym, spend two hours every day. But what we end up doing is building this body for some time. When old age is there, all the beauty is gone. But the soul is naturally beautiful. When the soul goes back to Vakuntaloka spiritual world, it revives its original form. It is not fantasy, but it has to be realized with progressive spiritual advancement. The soul gets a form which is similar to Lord, as beautiful as Lord. This is called Sarupya. So all the personalities in the spiritual world, they very closely resemble Lord Vishnu, having four hands, Shanka, Chakra, Gada, Padma, everything in their hands. This is called Sarupya Mukti. Then Sarshti. Sarshti means having the same opulence as Lord. We want to become rich here. All the opulence that we have, first of all, does not satisfy us. But actually in spiritual world, we have all the opulence of God. We are children of God. God bestows all opulence. So we already are sons of the richest father, God. Why we are struggling here? To gain something and to lose it. Again, struggle in different body. That is called Sarshti Mukti, having the same opulence as that of God. Salokya, living on the same planet where God is living. So these are the four personal liberations in which personally devotee serves God in the spiritual world. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's unique contribution is he gave the topmost, the highest revelation of spiritual life. And that is Prema Pumartho Mahan. So when he was discussing with some Vaishnavas about uh, Mahaprabhu told, I am very happy. You understand that the form of Krishna is truth. It is not illusory form like all our forms here in this world, which are temporary. But please tell me, what do you consider the aim of life? So they told, going back to Godhead is the aim of life. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, that is very nice, but still there is some contamination. There is some fruitive mentality here. What is fruitive mentality? doing any action in which our personal satisfaction is involved. So I want to engage in service of Krishna so that I go back to Godhead and I get enjoyment because there is no death, no problem, unlimited opulence, life without fatigue, without any distress is there. So there is some tinge of personal enjoyment. So this is not pure spiritual life, pure bhakti. Pure bhakti is jnana karmadi anavritam. 
In pure bhakti, a person, devotee, simply wants to serve Krishna. There is no desire to get anything in return. There is no desire to develop any kind of further understanding. One simply wants to serve Krishna. This is the highest form of bhakti which can be executed. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Prem Upumarthu Mahan, the fifth aim, the topmost aim of life is getting love of Godhead. I don't want to serve Krishna. I don't want to do a business. I am serving you so that I can go back to Godhead, back to Vaikuntha Loka. I want to serve God because I am God's servant. I want, I am lover of God. So I just want to serve God, give Him satisfaction. He may give me happiness or not, it does not matter. He may put me in hell, heaven or in spiritual world, it does not matter. I just want to engage in the loving service of God without any expectation of return. That is why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Na dhanam, na janam, na... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just gave eight verses. He did not teach much. He gave Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the prasadam to everyone. And he just told, chant Hare Krishna Mantra very nicely, as far as possible in a group of people together, and all realization will happen. And he just gave eight verses as philosophical guidance, which are called Shikshashtakam. And one of the verses states, Na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim, kavitam va jagadisha kamaye, Mama Janmani Janmani Shware Bhavatad Bhakti Rahetu Kitvai. We are all after money and packages. That is what the students discuss when they come to the best colleges. But Mahaprabhu is telling, I do not want any money, Nadhanam. So do you then people tell I want power, I want followers? Mahaprabhu tells Najanam, I do not want influence in society, I do not want followers also. Na Sundarim then what do you want? You are satisfying, you are satisfied in finding a partner who loves you very much? No, na sundarim, I don't want beautiful women also. Then what do you want? You want moksha, freedom from uh, opposite gender, freedom from wealth, freedom from recognition and influence. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, I don't want moksha, I don't want liberation also. Mama Janmani Janmani Shware. Let me take birth janmani janmani over and over again, but I want just one thing. Bhavatad bhaktir ahayetu ki tvai. Please engage me in your pure devotional service. So this is a very great secret in life. When we have misery in our life, we should simply try to understand, I am not trying to satisfy Krishna. The design is, I am just like a leaf and Krishna is like tree. Water has to be given to the roots. Similarly, all our efforts should be for satisfaction of Krishna. Then I am automatically satisfied in the life. And this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed by his personal example. Vairagya Vidya Nij Bhakti Yoga Shikshartha Mekav Purusha Purana Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the science, not of optical physics, not of artificial intelligence. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the science of Vairagya Renunciation. It is a great science. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he was belonging to aristocratic family, having very beautiful, obedient young wife, loving mother, but he renounced at the age of 24 years. And the richest and the most influential people of the society also renounced following the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they were living under trees in the jungle. And they were experiencing the most extraordinary happiness. So this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told. This is Gaudiya Vaishnavism. We need not hanker after anything external, but a person can have an experience of highest stage of ecstasy living under a tree simply by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, engaging in the loving service of God and spreading this confidential knowledge to others. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself displayed, simply by chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he displays the highest states of ecstasy. He would enter into Jagannath temple, he saw Lord Jagannath and fainted, and the stone got melted. That stone is even there. If you come on trip with us to Jagannath Puri, we can take you to the place. So these are spiritual ecstasies, that the stones also get melted by the touch of a spiritually ecstatic person. So in order to experience happiness, one simply needs to engage in unmotivated, pure, loving devotional service of Krishna. 
So this loving relationship with Krishna is also experienced in various ways. One can simply have a loving relationship with Krishna in a passive state, which is called Shantarasa. Or one can actually engage in service of Krishna as a servant. One can engage in service of Krishna as parents of Krishna. Or one can engage in service of Krishna as friends of Krishna or as a conjugal lover. Usually people think, oh, uh, where is Krishna? I want to meet Krishna. Show me God. But seeing God and having personal association of God, that is definitely great stage of bliss. But the highest stage of bliss, which is unfathomable to ordinary people, that was explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is the understanding, the objective of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. That is called Vipralambharasa. The highest stage of bliss was experienced by gopis of Vrindavan when Krishna left them. And Krishna ne never came back to Vrindavan. And the feelings of separation which brought apparent turmoil in the hearts of all the Vrijvasis, that feeling of separation is the highest stage of spiritual ecstasy and bliss. So in this mood, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu educated all his followers to worship Krishna in the mood of great separation. So the devotees, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they understand I am very fallen. I have no interest in this material world. Uh, actually, I am eternal servant of Krishna, but I am so selfish, I did not want to serve Krishna. So I have no chance, no capacity to see Krishna ever. I am so fallen and contaminated. I am so lusty and greedy. They are always in this humble mood. But then at the same time, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they realize, but I am devotee of Krishna. And uh, unless I associate with Krishna, what is the hope for me? So they want to associate with Krishna. They want to see Krishna. At the same time, they are so humble. They understand, I am not at all qualified to see Krishna. So in this great separation, they worship Krishna. Where are you, Krishna? When can I see you? How will I see you? But I am not capable of seeing you. So in this mood of separation, they worship Krishna. And thus they attain the highest stage of ecstasy, spiritual bliss, which was experienced by the gopis of Vrindavan. So these are some of the basics, the fundamental principles of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Gaudiya Vaishnavism is not some another ism. It is a path of absolute truth. The absolute truth is we are eternal souls. We are having our real identities. But as we enter into different dreams every night, we keep on hallucinating, thinking I am these forms, these bodies, life after life. So, engaging in loving service of Krishna without any expectation of result, spiritual or even material or even spiritual elevation, just trying to engage in loving service of Krishna, aspiring just to have love of God, not caring whether I go to heaven or hell, this is Gaudiya Vaishnavism. So now, uh, I request all of you, you can ask questions. It is preferable if you post related to topic, otherwise other questions also can be discussed. So the questions have come. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Dhanvat, how can we persuade followers of other Vaishnava Sampradayas to accept that Lord Chaitanya's teachings are the climax of the historical evolution of theism? Hmm. So different people have different understandings. First of all, one has to be a very sincere seeker of absolute truth. Nobody can understand Krishna without engaging in sincere devotional service. One should be willing to sacrifice everything to understand absolute truth. So if we are sincere, then the guidance is always there. Krishna is there seated in the heart. He will guide how to understand ourselves and how to explain to others. So you can read Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya went and debated with all the scholars. So how to convince the followers of impersonalism that uh, this is the absolute truth? How to follower, how to convince the followers of other paths about the absolute truth? All the arguments 
with proper Vedic and historical evidences are given in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So I request if you can please go through a thorough study, we will be able to answer all the, all the devotees, all the aspirants. Hare Krishna Prabhu, why is color of His Divine Grace Vigra black in the new temple opened in Bangalore of Iskon recently? So, similar question was asked in previous session also. Vigrahas are expansions of the personalities. On the spiritual platform, there is no difference between the person, just like there is no difference between Krishna, His form, His name, His qualities. Similarly, there is no difference between the name, form, qualities of liberated souls like Srila Prabhupada, pure devotees of Krishna. So any form of Srila Prabhupada carved out of black stone or white stone or Ashtadhatu deities which we have in other temples, all these deities are expansions of Prabhupada so thus there is no difference whichever form in which we can worship him. Hare Krishna Prabhu, some of the people say that they are superior. They don't the constitutional position of Krishna. You mean they don't know? How can we help them to understand Krishna and Prabhu? Why women's consider in Shudra? So somebody is asking, what is the constitutional position of Krishna? How can we help them understand? So we have to increase our realization. If we understand nicely, thoroughly, then we will be able to convince others also. Still some people are there who are faithless. We should not try to convince them. That is offense, ninth offense, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name about Krishna. So the faithless people want to become atheists. That is why Krishna sends the philosophers who preach atheism in the garb of spiritual philosophy. So if I want to become atheist, Krishna will inspire me, will facilitate so we should not interfere with them. But some people who are innocent, if we are realized, we can help them. So we should engage in devotional service of Krishna nicely. Then Krishna will guide from the heart how to convince such people. Preaching is spontaneous. If we follow rules and regulations nicely, such guidance will come from the heart. Second part of your question is, why women is considered in Shudra? You are telling women are compared to Shudras. Uh, no, they are not compared to Shudras. But uh, it is a fact that Krishna in the verse, Striyo Vaishyas Tatha Shudras Te Piyanti Paramgatim, he has categorized them in one set. So the most elevated personalities are Brahmanas and Kshatriyas also. They can understand spiritual life and make their lives perfect. But less than that, Brahmanas are in Sattvaguna. And some kings also were Rajarishis. They were also Rishis, but they were doing the responsibility, carrying out the duties of a king. But less than that, Vaishyas are in mode of passion and ignorance mixed. And uh, similarly, women, Shudras, they are in ignorance. All Papionis means the Panchamas, lesser than the Shudras, who are in great ignorance. So if Sattva Guna is less, then it is difficult for us to understand Krishna. So the businessmen, the mercantile community, Vaishyas and in women and the other people who are meat eaters, who don't follow the rules and regulations of the Vedas, it is not possible for them to understand Krishna. Just like simple example, if I am intoxicated under influence of alcohol, I cannot understand even what is reality around me. So these modes of uh, passion and ignorance, they create so much of material attachment that they take away our intelligence and it is difficult to understand Krishna who can be understood on Satpaguna. So women also because they are uh, conducted by the lower modes of nature. Again, so please do not feel offended. We have to understand first of all we are not man, we are not woman, we are not animal. So these are different dresses. But it is a fact that the dresses are having different capacities. Just like some dogs are more intelligent than other dogs. Army employs them for detecting the bombs. They are very smart. They are intelligent. Some animals, animal is animal. But some animals, they behave very intelligently. Among the animals, some species, they are more intelligent. In a similar fashion, among the human beings, the dress of a Brahmana is more conducive because favorable qualities are there. Intelligence is very, very sharp. And uh, 
tolerance is there, truthfulness is there, forgiveness is there. So all these qualities Brahmanas, the Brahmanical body possesses. But women in general, they are having a lot of material attachment. So if we are materially attached, it is very, very difficult to advance on the spiritual path. But Krishna consciousness is so nice, Krishna tells, even though a person can have bodies which are not favorable, by following Krishna consciousness, which is totally spiritual path, person can make advancement regardless of whatever is the state of body. So we have to understand we are not men or women. We are different from the bodies, but women bodies are not very favorable for spiritual advancement. But in Krishna consciousness, there is no difference. That is what Krishna says. That is why Srila Prabhupada gave chance to men and women. What to speak of Prabhupada, even 500 years ago when the society was very, very conservative, that time when it was inconceivable for women to have leadership roles, Janava Mata, the wife of Nityanand Prabhu, was leading the entire Gaudi Vaishnavism, the entire Gaudi Vaishnav movement of the country. And she was guiding the Goswamis, people who were belonging to aristocratic families, the great sannyasis. They were being guided by Janava Mata, a woman. So, in Krishna consciousness, there is no difference. A devotee remembers Krishna at the time of death for attaining Golok Dham. Lord Krishna says the same in 18.66 Bhagavad Gita. I will give moksha who surrender me. No, Krishna does not tell I will give moksha. Krishna tells, Aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishyami mashucha papebhyo moksha ishyami. I will give you freedom from the sinful reactions. Do not worry. So anybody who surrenders to Krishna, Krishna gives freedom from sinful reactions. And in the next verse, Krishna tells what we are supposed to do. So surrendering to Krishna is the beginning of spiritual life. Then what we are supposed to do? Manmana, bhavmad bhakto, madhyaji, maam namaskuru. Then we have to think of Krishna. Unless we are freed from the material entanglement, we will think I am the body and we will run to satisfy this body. Run to get honor and fame in this temporary world, which is foolishness. Why do you want to become famous in dreamlike situation here and forgetting your eternal business? But if we think I am the body, we will not be able to. So first of all, get freedom from sinful reactions. We will understand who am I. Then we will be able to think of Krishna. Bhavmat Bhakto engaging loving service of Krishna. And one who is devotee, he goes back to Godhead. Taddhamam Paramamama. So that is why we have to read Bhagavad Gita holistically. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, what are the differences between Gaudiya Vaishnavism and the Gaudiya Math lineage? Gaudiya Vaishnavism, as I told, all the followers of Lord Chaitanya are called Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And among the followers of Lord Chaitanya, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Mahara, spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada, started an institution known as Gaudiya Math. So Gaudiya Math is a subset of Gaudiya Vaishnav Vaishnavism, like Hare Krishna movement is also a subset of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. This institution was started by Srila Prabhupada. Gaudiya Math was started by Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master. Hare Krishna Prabhu, why the Krishna will be there in blue color? You mean to ask in the spiritual world because that is the original nature of Krishna's body. But he can take any color you wish. Ye thamam prapadyante. In any form, any size, in any feature, any relationship that we want to have in Krishna, have with Krishna, Krishna reciprocates. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, what is time equivalent of Vaikuntha to earth? No time equivalent, time does not move there. We are said to be fallible souls. How can we become unfallible soul? Or it ain't possible to get a character in Golok as infallible. We are all infallible. Soul is never fallible, but we are simply in illusion. We think I have fallen down. So spiritual life means revival of our original consciousness. We don't have to learn anything. We have to unlearn this matter. We already are 
having eternal relationship with Krishna, we have forgotten. Revival of that consciousness is Krishna consciousness. So Ashma is writing, help me Prabhuji, I am suffering. So all the help is there. So we simply have to take the counsel, the advice of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita under the guidance of devotees. Any trouble is there, simply try to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra to begin with. Just chant and hear very, very attentively. This is immediate solution and ultimate solution also. What is required is we need to have faith in the process. But these things are so powerful, even if a person performs with insufficient faith, it is mentioned in the scriptures, they still act very, very profoundly. So just start chanting. So start chanting and hearing very, very attentively. Read Bhagavad Gita as far as possible and please take the help of devotees and all the problems will be solved. Problems are not outside, they are only because of forgetfulness of Krishna, the rajas and tamas in the heart. Can a woman become Acharya? Why not? If she is qualified, she can become Acharya. Prabhuji, is Gaudiya Vaishnavism the highest philosophy to follow? Or we just follow our spiritual master, that is sufficient enough. So spiritual master has to be accepted in Gaudiya Vaishnavism or any ism. Any philosophy that you want to follow without spiritual master, Nothing is successful. So in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, Adav Guru Vashram, we have to take shelter of spiritual master. Prabhuji, some people worship Krishna, but they could not accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as Krishna, even after showing them proofs from the Shastras. And say, Skorn is teaching wrong. What we can do for them? No problem. They want to worship Krishna, let them worship Krishna. Understanding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not easy. So if they are sincere in their service of Krishna, they will be able to understand one day. Let them worship. Actually, they all need protection. That's why adding to what Prabhuji said, so all of them in one said by the Lord. Okay. What is Nimbarg Vaishnavas? You mean Nimbarka. So Nimbarka Charya is uh, the most one of the most prominent Acharyas of Kumar Sampradaya. There is a displic succession which comes from the four Kumaras, the sons of Brahma. And Nimbarka Acharya is the prominent Acharya in Kalyuk for the Kumar Sampradaya. And their followers are called Nimbarka Vaishnavas. That is also bona fide displic succession. Prabhuji, in student life, we have so many people, their views, attractions, repulsion. How to keep our mind stable and engaged in service of God? Student life, they are less. <laughs> when uh, the more time we spend here in material world, these attractions always increase. And actually all these attractions are addictive in nature. We do not need them. But once our senses come in contact with the sense objects, these attractions, we get hooked on to it. We get addicted to it. And addictions always put a person into endless harassment. So there is no special pleasure derived, but I cannot leave them also. So that is why in order to come out of this cycle of immediate pleasure and ultimate misery, we need to take shelter of bona fide spiritual master and follow the rules and regulations very, very strictly. We have to follow spiritual life with great strictness, like people follow the advice of their gurus and coaches for professional sports and competitive exams with similar or greater rigor spiritual life the rules and regulations should be followed then all these attractions will not bother us Prabhu where to go and surrender to so you can please uh, visit the nearest Hare Krishna movement center or you can write to us the email id we'll share in the chat or in the comments also so you can please send a mail to us and we will connect you with the devotees closest to your center to your place. Is HKM, you mean does HKM come under Hinduism or not? Nothing comes under Hinduism. Hinduism is no ism actually. That is called Varnashramism if you want to call it or Sanatanism. Hindu word is not there at all. Hindu is a geographical location on the other side of the Sindhu valley. Uh, the people could not call uh, because they were not habitual of pronouncing Sindhu. Then S became 
H. They started calling Hindus, those who live on other side of the Sindhu Valley. So these people on the other side of Sindhu Valley, they were following some rules and regulations of Varnashrama Dharma. So it is called Sanatam Dharma or Varnashrama Dharma. But these people, uh, they started telling, calling uh, the people who were living in the Aryavarta as Hindus. But they are actually Varnashramites. That is the actual understanding. Prabhuji, I got recorded podcasts of Bhagavad Gita session in your voice, but it's only third chapter onwards. Can HKM provide first and second chapters recording as well? Yes, so it is third chapter till 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. We have there, uh, we have our podcast and the link also we'll share now. So you can visit if you want to just hear. We have sessions on Bhagavad Gita and on Srimad Bhagavatam also. And uh, the live sessions of His Grace Amitasan Prabhu, which he was taking on Sunday same time, those are also recorded there. And these sessions also at Postcard will be podcast will be uploaded there. So you can all visit if you wish. And as far as the need is there to understand first and second chapter, uh, we already have recorded entire Bhagavad Gita verse by verse, and we'll be releasing uh, in around Janmashtami. So that time you will have first and second chapters also. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Original Krishna is black in color, right or blue? Blackish blue. It is Shyam color. Somebody has written no sound, please. I think sound got missing. Okay. But I'm I think now I'm audible. Hare Krishna Prabhu. When chanting our 16 rounds daily, do we need to do it in one single sitting? Prabhu, why I ask is that I am only chanting half my rounds in the morning and the other half at night. So if we can finish our rounds towards the early part of the day, it's much better because as the day progresses, Tamuguna becomes more and more prominent. Daytime is Rajaguna, night time is Tamuguna. So chanting uh, will be less effective. That is why Brahm Murta time is very auspicious and unless we have got some urgent work, we should Start our chanting in Brahm Murta, that is before sunrise. So that is more suitable time and if we can finish our 16 rounds in one go, nothing like that. So what is chanting actually? We are trying to come in contact with Krishna. Krishna is spiritual, just like an iron rod in fire. The rod, if kept for sufficient time, it also starts acting like fire. So if we are maintaining touch with Krishna, for some time, then again we lose touch. For some time, again we lose touch. We will not be spiritualized. So actually the process is Satatam Kirtayantum. On 24 hours, always chant Krishna's name, always think of Krishna, engage in service of Krishna. And this is possible when we have done good 16 rounds in the morning. So try to maintain constant touch. Try to chant 16 rounds in one go. But if it is not possible, then you can break it. But do it as early as possible in the day. But if you are very busy, you can only do at night, then also it's okay. But try to shift it to earlier part of the day as early as possible. And try to do it in one chunk or in bigger chunks as big as possible. Prabhuji, in our body, where soul does stay? In the heart. Anuraniyan, Mahatur Mahiyan. Atmasya jantur nihito guhayam hridayeshu vikarshati anta hridayat hriday guhayam means in the heart. Here is the soul. What is the difference between Madhva Charya Dvaita and Lord Chaitanya Achinte Bheda Tattva? Is the philosophical difference differs Madhva Vaishnava from Gaudi Vaishnava, though belonging to Brahma Sampradaya? Yes, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this highest philosophy of love of God, it is the ultimate aim of life, which is not found in the regular uh, Madhvas and Tattvadi Sampradaya. How does worship by Gaudiya Vaishnavas differ from other Vaishnava worship? What are the tenets of Gaudiya Vaishnavism that I just basically explained? Spontaneous love of God. This is unique contribution of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. If we worship Krishna by following rules and regulations very strictly, we will go back to Godhead. But only the devotees who have got spontaneous love for God, 
not worshipping God because these rules and regulations are to be followed, so I am obliged to follow. Or because Krishna is supreme personality, I am jiva part and parcel, so I have, I have no other option, I have to follow, I must do it. In knowledge of God, that I am eternal servant of God, I am doing it. Not out of obligation, not out of a sense of duty, not out of even having knowledge that Krishna is God. When a person spontaneously wants to serve Krishna, one is not interested in knowing whether Krishna is God or not. But spontaneously, just like a young man and woman, they don't rationalize but are spontaneously attracted to each other. So, of course, initially we need to understand philosophy. Who is God? God is Krishna. I am part and parcel. Whether this is fact or not, how this is fact. But after understanding the philosophy, following the rules and regulations very nicely, if we follow the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we will reach a platform like the Virjavasis. Virjavasis don't bother, don't know that Krishna is God. But they don't have any other objective in life but to serve Krishna. This is the highest stage of spiritual practice. And Krishna derives greatest pleasure in that. So in Chaitanya Charitamrita it is mentioned, when people worship Krishna, in the knowledge of the opulence of Krishna, that worship, that devotional service does not satisfy Krishna. Because uh, there is a cause for that devotional service. Because Krishna is great and God, so I am serving Krishna. But when one serves Krishna without even knowing Krishna is God, that satisfies Krishna. Oh, this living entity just wants to engage in my service even without knowing that I am God. This is my true lover. This is the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, Prabhuji. I started going ISKCON in Ludhiana where we have regular Sunday classes. I started going from last two months. But now I have final year graduation exams. I know I should focus on studies. But how to simultaneously worship Krishna? So our study is also Krishna's worship if we are doing for Krishna. We should not study thinking that getting good marks in examination or getting placed in a good position or job will satisfy me. No. How much ever we score nicely, whatever we have in life, our life will be a bunch of frustrations. But if we study very nicely so that if I have good position tomorrow, then that position can be used to serve Krishna. Then our study becomes spiritualized. So as devotees, we need to our duties nicely. We tell our students, you please perform best. Try to come as topper of your class or batch so that you can be in a position of greater influence and then you can spread this knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So try to study very nicely so that you can spread Krishna consciousness. Then our education, our studies also become spiritualized. And meanwhile, do not leave your chanting, your reading. Try to take out time for that thing every day. And after your exams are over, then full-fledgedly you can involve, engage again. So please focus on studies. Hare Krishna Prabhu. When are we resuming Bhagavad Gita on Wednesday, Saturday, 8 p.m. session? So sessions are going on. Uh, Bhagavad Gita we will not have. Uh, we will have Bhagavatam sessions now, which are uh, anyway happening. Bhagavad Gita we have recorded, 13 to 15 chapters. It is there on the podcast. All of you can visit. The link might have been posted by now. And uh, further, uh, the entire 18 chapters, again, we have recorded for a third party. And that will be published online around Janmashtami. Prabhuji, who have heart transplant or have artificial heart, where is the soul? It is still there in the heart. Heart is the seat of the soul. So suppose I am sitting there now on this chair. If you take the chair out, will I also go out of the room? No, I will be here only. I have to talk to you. I may stand and talk. I may have another chair and talk or sit on the floor and talk. Because I've got business here. So similarly, heart is the seat of the soul. If the seat is removed, another seat is put, the soul will still remain in the heart. Prabhuji, just like Gaudi Sampradaya is sub-branch of Brahma Sampradaya and we call it authorized, Ramanandi is sub-branch of Sri Sampradaya. So how can we call it unauthorized? Please clarify. So these discussions are not suitable for this platform. We can discuss it 
uh, on some other platform. So let us not create some uh, confusion by uh, speaking some things which can create because these are platforms many people may not like if we discuss. So we don't want to discuss what is good and what is bad. Try to understand absolute truth and become learned in philosophy. Then you yourself will know what is right and what is wrong. So let us discuss what is absolute truth and then you measure what is right, what is fitting in this parameter, what is not fitting. So Sri Sampradaya is also bona fide Sampradaya. Hare Krishna Prabhu, what is the summary of Bhagavad Gita? Summary of Bhagavad Gita is, we are part and parcel of Krishna. So our only duty is to surrender completely unto Krishna, engage in his loving service and... Uh, This is presented in 18 chapter, verse number 65 and 66. So you can please read the translation and purports very carefully. That is the entire crux of Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I am doing four rounds of chanting. How I am complete, surrender to God and do all 16 rounds. I want to do, but there is some obstacle. So please take guidance of devotees, stick to your four rounds. Don't lose that and Krishna will guide how to come to 16 rounds gradually. And not just 16 rounds, 16 attentive rounds we have to do every day, offenseless rounds, but actually we have to chant throughout the day. 24 hours is the process. Prabhupada explains Hare Krishna movement is based on the foundation of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra at every second. So every second, every moment we should chant, this is the foundation. Whatever activities we are doing, Hare Krishna should continuously go on. So much so that in dream also we chant. Then we will realize how this holy name is not different from Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, what is the Gaudi understanding of Vedanta? What are the Gaudi institutions of the present day apart from Hare Krishna movement or ISKCON? Gaudi understanding of Vedanta is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That is why we did not have separate commentary. So whatever is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the Gaudi and not just Gaudi, that is actual understanding because Ved Vyasa has given Vedanta. So he himself can explain best what is the actual meaning of Vedanta. And it is told Bhashyoyam Brahma Sutranam about Srimad Bhagavatam. Sarva Vedanta Saram hi Shri Bhagavata Mishyate Tad Rasamrita Triptasya Nanyat Syat Rati Kvachit Sarva Vedanta Saram hi Shri Bhagavata Mishyate The summary of all the Vedanta, the Vedas is Srimad Bhagavatam, it is mentioned. So Bhashyoyam Brahma Sutranam, everywhere it is mentioned, Srimad Bhagavatam is the crux of all Vedic knowledge, the commentary on Vedanta. So there is no need of separate commentary. That is our understanding still because when some people told, no, no, you people are not knowledgeable. You cannot write a commentary on Vedanta. That is why you are telling you accept Bhagavatam only. So Sri Balde Vidya Bhushan presented a commentary. But however, we read Bhagavatam, then we will understand. Other Godded institutions apart from Hare Krishna movement and ISKCON. So many devotees... Uh, like Gaudiya Mat is still there, Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj movement which is going on. Other lesser known institutions are there which even I am not aware. Here and there, many devotees are trying to push whatever they can as per their capacity. Either the three modes of material nature will use my intelligence and engage my senses in the sense gratification or else I as an individual soul should use the intelligence and conquer my senses. So what is our question? Yes, you are right. You should use intelligence by reading Bhagavad Gita and conquer the senses. Okay, question is how to conquer our senses? By engaging our senses in the service of Krishna. Rishi Kena, Rishi Keshe Sevnam. Rishik means senses, Isha means controller. Krishna is called Rishi Kesha, controller of senses. So if we surrender to Krishna, Krishna will control our senses. They will not be able to disturb us. So thank you so much for all your questions. And uh, I know you have many more questions, so we will discuss. So please keep it parked till the next session. Thank you so much for hearing. Please keep on chanting, keep reading Bhagavad Gita, understand this very nice philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Follow the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya and let us try to approach closer to 
the highest perfection of human life that is love of godhead other questions whatever you wish to have if you want to have session on any special topic you can please mention in the comment and based on the comments we will try to decide the topic thank you so much for hearing we'll meet again next sunday hari krishna